Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2019-2020 Upper Deck Opeachy Platinum Hockey 8-box inner case, pick your team number 3 from a uh, fresh master case right here. Big thanks to everybody right here for getting into the action. On Tuesday the 8th, pick your team number 3. If you have a little rooftop next to your name, then that means you uh, won that team in that random team randomizer that we did, which is in a separate video. So big thanks to everybody here. Kevin ended up with that last spot in Mojo, St. Louis Blues. There's the OPG play. There you go. That's something positive, Joe. Okay. So we'll select a die and we'll go one, two, three for the left inner and four, five, six for the right inner. It's three. Go one, two, three for the left side and we'll save this for next time. Good luck, everybody. Now, as most of you know, I'm working on it, but my hockey knowledge is not super strong, so you're going to have to let me know um, I mean, I know some of the bigger names, but you know, if there's some like under-the-radar rookie that's actually doing really well or something like that, I don't know if I'm going to know that. You're going to have to let me know if we pull something nice here. Yeah, no, not not this season's Lakers, Joe P. That's for sure. They can win championships, though. Something the Suns haven't done yet. And how sad is Joe? I don't think we'll see Joe P. for the entire summer. He won't show his face here the entire summer if the Suns can't pull it off. If they're just regular season champions. You trust my hockey knowledge, Mac? I wouldn't. <laughs> They'll pull it off. How much money have you put on it, Joe P? Otherwise, it's just empty words. Let's see what the... Uh... I think as of, according to Vegas Insider... As of today, the Phoenix Suns are plus 500. They're, they're not the favorites. Nets are, are, the, uh, are the favorites at plus 350. Then Golden State at plus 450. And then the Phoenix Suns at plus 500. What did you, what did you get it at, Joe? 25 to win. Oh, so that's plus... One hun plus if it's twenty five to win two fifty, what's the money line on? What's the line on that? There's Vasilevsky to ninety nine. William Carlson, Matt Pink. You put fifty on it five five hundred plus five hundred, got it. 
Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound very confident, Jokey. And there's Adam Goudet, rookie auto for Vancouver. Brian Croft. You don't seem too confident. But, so you paid 25 bucks for the Bengals to win and only 50 bucks for your sons to win the whole thing? All this, all this talk about the Suns, and Joe P's only put fifty dollars on his team. You should be more confident than that. I mean, Joe P, you've been saying all season. Look, look at superstars like Chris Paul and and Devin Booker. The depth of that team. Who's going to stop them? It's not going to be, Suns aren't going to be plus 500 when the playoffs start. This is John Carlson. You did that bet two months ago. Well, you should be even more confident now. I feel like, Joe P, I feel like, uh, who's going to stop the Suns, Joe? Nobody, right? You said it yourself. They're well coached. They're playing like a team. They got great chemistry. They got Chris Paul at at point guard running the show they got a pure scorer in Devin Booker, big man DeAndre Ayton, they're a well-balanced team. You should that should, that's you should be putting $1000 on on your sons. No one's stopping them, right? Brooklyn Nets? No way. Warriors? No. Bucks? No. Oh, no excuses, Joe P. Injuries can happen. What do you tell me when I when I say my Lakers have been injured? You say, "Well, they should just have better depth." Right? So no excuses, Joe P. Hogwash, yeah, that's hogwash, Joe P. Injuries can happen. Injuries can happen. Yeah, when you say injuries, ha when I say injuries happen, you're like, oh, no excuses. You said they have the best, best depth in the NBA. Look at that bench, Joe P. That bench is amazing. You should put $1,000. Yeah, no confidence. 50 bucks? He only, he, Jason, he put 25 on the Bengals to win the Super Bowl, and he only put 50 on, on, the, on the Suns to win the whole thing. That, that, that sounds, that's no, that's zero confidence at all. With the Suns' depth, I mean, they're, they're, they're easy champions. We need, we need to see a $1,000 ticket, Joe P. We need proof, too. 1000 bucks, screenshot. Otherwise, you're just all, all. Otherwise, you're just talking. That's it. I think that's true, Jason. Deep down, he knows they're not. They're not going to win. Maybe he's snake bit from the '90s, early 2000s. Next auto is rookie auto Sammy Niku for Winnipeg. Nicholas. I think all card chip in this, right? No, vet commons don't ship in this. All right, that's what the description says. But obviously, that's a refractor. That's a rainbow, so that it will ship. Obviously, inserts, hits will obviously ship. Those will ship. Nico Sturm will ship. Kappa Kako will ship. That's to Vigny Malkin to 199. 
Kale McCarr is pretty good. For Colorado, that'll go. All of those will go to Ryan Harold. There's Brandon Saad to three ninety nine. That's for Chicago. That'll be for Nicholas D. I do like those sunset inserts. Those will obviously ship. Yeah, nice, nice Kale McCarr hit would be pretty nice. Ryan, let's, let's put that on the universe. Yeah, but injuries don't matter, Joe. Okay? You said yourself many times. Injuries only matter if it's the Suns. Next man up. They have the depth. It's just funny that you're putting $25 on a team you don't even support in the Bengals and only $50 to win the whole the whole thing which you seem to be so confident about. I feel like there's a, there's a little disparity there. I feel like you're not very confident in your Suns. You taught Joe P can talk a big game about his Suns. But when it comes to putting his money where his mouth is, hmm, that's that's when you know someone's actually serious about it or not. Yeah, but if you're putting 25 on the Bengals, I feel like you'd put at, at least quadruple that on, uh, maybe 10 times that on on the Suns, a team in which you are so confident about. Yeah, but imagine the kids got to eat, but. Imagine how much how much more they can eat when you win that easy bet. Suns to win the whole thing. They've got the depth. They've got the talent. You know? They've got the chemistry. That just that sounds like all you can afford. It sounds like you're not very confident. Sounds like you're not very confident. You know what you should do, Joe? If you win that Bengals bet, roll over that money that you won with the Bengals, put it on a Suns future to win the whole thing. No, don't, I'm not saying bet a kidney. Yeah, I would let it ride, Joe P. <laughs> Chris, Joe P's not bullying anybody. Rookie auto, Mario Ferraro, he can handle it. If you're talking about me, I don't know which Joe you're talking about. Mario Ferraro, San Jose Sharks. That'll be Brian Croft. Me? I'm not. He can handle it, Chris. I assure you that. I've, I've met Joe P multiple times in person, so I've socialized with Joe P. So I, so I don't know anyone else I haven't met. I probably wouldn't wouldn't give him so much crap, but but Joe, I know I can. So relax, Chris. Relax. There's Tara Hirose to one ninety nine. Oh, I've got some bite, Joe P. I've got some bite. There's Mark Stone to 399. <laughs> if the Suns play the Lakers, I don't know. Lakers have to make it first. I told I told everybody, listen, I'll 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 be I'll be worried. 
I told everybody, hey, I'll be worried if the Lakers get to the All-Star break and they're not looking good. And we're pretty much at the All-Star break. So I'm definitely, definitely worried at this point. <laughs> she knows. She knows. Got that bite. Lakers will slip in the last. I mean, at that point, I, do I even want the Lakers to be in the playoffs? Just to be swept by whoever they meet in the first round? That would be fun, Bam. Yeah, Joe P. If the Lakers Suns meet in the first round, you should you should come over and hang out. You've been planning a trip here anyway, so that'd be a good excuse. Come and hang out. We'll put like we'll put like dinner on the line or something like that. You can help me. You can help me with group breaks while we do while we hang out. We'll live stream the whole thing. I don't know, but de definitely, uh, definitely worried about my Lakers at this point. Which I said, listen, if the Lakers are struggling by, by this point in the season, then I'll definitely be worried, and I am I'm close enough to the All Star game by then. I don't know what kind of trades they can even make, Mac. At this point, this this is it. They've Rob Palink, GM Rob Palinka has locked us, locked the Lakers into this roster. Every time LeBron cries, we drink. We should do the same for, uh, you know, it's it's not like Chris Paul doesn't whine at all. <laughs> There's Max Domi to three ninety nine. But I guess when it's your team, it's not it's not Chris Paul whining. It's the refs doing you wrong as always. Trade LeBron. Imagine. I feel like I feel like uh, I feel like ESPN would melt down. All the sports networks and websites would would melt down if LeBron was traded. But what could you even get for LeBron? It's like talking about trading Mike Trout. Like what or Connor McDavid? Could, what what kind of value could you really get? I said Leon Dreisaitl at 399. What could, what value could you really get on trading like superstars? Like you almost inevitably always end up losing that trade if you end up moving a superstar. This Capacaco, Matt Pink. Right cuz every once in a while they'll they'll be there'll be conversations about, "Oh yeah, what if the Angels trade Mike Trout?" But like what could they really trade him for? We've got Quinn Hughes. Nice. Uh, Quinn Hughes is Vancouver, and Jack is, or is it the other way around? Jack is New Jersey. Quinn is Vancouver. Quinn is Vancouver. All right, so that's going to go to Brian Croft, who picked up Vancouver straight up many days ago. Thank you, Brian. Oh, I guess Mac was the one. Uh, he has New Jersey. He's the one waiting for... Well, here's a rainbow Jack Hughes. I feel like there's some value in those marquee rookie cards. Who's the, who's the better Hughes? 
Is Quinn better or is or is Jack better? Maxing right now might be a toss-up between the Hughes brothers. I feel like I someone someone let me know which way this was, but I feel like one of the brothers was more highly touted going in to the league, and the other one was less highly touted, and then it flipped. And it turned out that the highly touted Hughes brother didn't has not really lived up to that hype, but the less hyped Hughes brother has exceeded expectations. Is that right? Ryan's saying there's a Luke Hughes? So maybe Luke Hughes could be better than Quinn and Jack. My hockey knowledge very loose. <laughs> I hear things. All right. Let's keep going. I do like those sunset parallels. There's Connor McDavid for Edmonton, Brian Croft. There's Nico Hersher for New Jersey. That's at 399. So maxing both are on semi good teams, and and I think Ryan's right about about Luke Hughes being better than all three. This is like uh, when people said Lamelo Ball is going to be better than than Leangelo and Lonzo. There's the Calder front. Is he really a Calder front runner? Taro Hirose for the Detroit Red Wings. That's going to go to Steve Birch. Who bought that team straight up. Mira Heiskanen to 149. All right, next three. Uh, let's look at some hockey scores maybe while I'm ripping open some packs here. Yeah, Lonzo. Yeah, Lonzo has steadily improved since his since his time with the Lakers. Oddly enough, if the Lakers, um, you know, and we knew what was going to happen when when LeBron James came to the Lakers, that you know the whole it'll be definitely win now. But I I, I wonder, you know, there'd be a world where. Where if the Lakers didn't make those wholesale moves with the youngsters, could I mean there could be D'Angelo Russell and Lonzo Ball in the backcourt, and then Brandon Ingram and Julius Randle, and then some big man, and then and then a five. So which could be an, it could have been an interesting team. If they let that team kind of marinate a little bit. When is Jaspi's going to get a star athlete? 
as guest breakers were in LA, that should be easy. Um, right, and Jordan Clarkson too. That could have been interesting too. Well, it is easy. It's easy in the sense that yeah, they're they're around here. They're geographically, it's easy, but I don't know. It turns out that a lot, a lot of them would rather want to get paid. They're they're not gonna do this for free. Unless they, uh, you know, unless they want to do it out of the goodness of their own heart, but. <laughs> That's right, Mac. I, <laughs> I'm a star already. It'd just be too much star power. 25 out uh, of uh, 50, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. That is a seismic gold. I don't know how much these later non rookie Connor McDavid's are going for, but I'll set those aside. And there's his teammate it's for Brian Croft. Although we've had, Panini has had some events. There's David Gustafsson. For Winnipeg, Nicholas D. We, Panini has had some events where they've usually that's when we're able to get like an athlete to to break with us. Panini has had some draft related or rookie premiere related events where they do the whole photo shoot for the season. And we've had some opportunities to to meet with some of those players and have some of those players actually break with us. There are the Hughes brothers right there. I think that I think that would be fun. Actually, bam, you're right. You saying I'm not an athlete? You should wait till I go to the Super Bowl experience at the LA Convention Center this week and run a 40 in like nine seconds. <laughs> Show you what kind of athlete I am. Yeah, I think that'd be cool, Rex. If if like Major League, that's that that'd really be more of the job of the of the of the manufacturers and the distributors maybe coming together and figuring out that kind of sponsorship. But I think that would be pretty great. Yeah. If we if we could set up at like we could probably set up a little a lot of a lot of uh, arenas and ballparks and stuff have like space set aside for like their social media team or their their TV networks can set up a studio there or something like that so that infrastructure is kind of there yeah it'd be cool to be cool to do that like like but I don't I don't know why they haven't really pushed that. You know, Upper Deck actually did a great job one year um, when the All Star Game was here. When the NHL All Star Game was here in uh, Los Angeles, some of you may remember a number of years ago where Jason Jaspi actually um, Upper Deck actually worked with us, maybe via a distributor or something like that. But either way, they uh, we got to set up a table at I think a couple hobby shops got to set up a table at the Fan Fest. The NHL Fan Fest they had during the weekend, and one of the days they had us set us set up at a table, and we like did breaks, and like I think a couple hockey players that you know came by and worked with Upper Deck, and they brought them around, and they busted open a couple boxes with us. But I feel like they should do some more of that stuff. I don't know. So I thought like Panini would do something like that. I, mean, I thought, oh yeah, Panini should like work with some of our distributors and you know get some local breakers out there to go to like Fan Fest and set up for an afternoon and you know show off the hobby and show off what what you know to because I think believe it or not you know for for you regulars that kind of see this every day and myself you know people don't realize actually how much how many people like don't realize 
what's going on in the hobby. Like if you took the entire population of the United States, like how many percent how many percent of the population knows about group breaks? Five percent? Ten percent? No, probably less than that. You know, that 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 this live streaming, group breaking thing. I think people are aware of, I think everyone's aware of like trading cards existing. And I think, I think most people probably are aware that trading cards still exist and that some of them still could go for a lot. But we still have people that come into our shop on a regular basis and I overhear them saying, yeah, I just read about this card that went for a zillion dollars. I didn't still, I didn't know that that was the thing. I didn't know that Luka Doncic could go for that much money. You know, and then I just that's and I googled and I discovered the car top and I walked in and you know their eyes are bugging out. They're like, "What? These singles are how much? Boxes are how much nowadays?" And people buy it. And they're like, "Yeah, people buy them." They're like, "It's, it's amazing." There's Elias Lindholm, six out of fifty. So yes, yeah, so, I mean there there's a lot of there's Dan, Daniel Yurtaikin, rookie auto for the San Jose Sharks. That'll be for Brian Croft, who won that team. But yeah, so I so that's why I'm like, what wow, like an a, a all star game or a Pro Bowl or Super Bowl fan fest type of event would be perfect for like upper or any of the big manufacturers to really come around and and um and at least maybe even just for, I'm not saying all weekend, maybe just for an afternoon or something like that have people do some group breaks, introduce people to the hobby. But then maybe maybe I have to spearhead that. But I think that really would get a lot more people kind of introduced to to the uh, to the hobby. Bam only knows about the hobby due to word of mouth years ago and only found Jaspies on a YouTube recommended video. Nice. Hey, well, be, be sure to like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, because I think our uh, our recommended video algorithms get a little bit better and more eyeballs, I think, happen if, if, you, if you do that. So help us game the algorithm. Press the subscribe button and we'll catch capture more guys like Bam find them and discover us and join group breaks. Ryan doesn't remember how you got into Jaspies. He's like, I don't remember how I got into Jaspies, but definitely regretting it. <laughs> you stumbled online one night. You came from a time when you worked at a card shop that no clue what a, what group breaking was. Oh, right, right, right. When we were part of that sort of group breaking collective. Yeah, that, that was a little while ago. Time flies by, Mac, when you're having fun. We still get that every once in a while, Rex. You know, there, there are still, still people anywhere from their 30s to 60s who will still come in. Who'll still come in and, and and say, hey, I've got a, I've got a bunch of cards in a shoebox from the from the 1980s, early 90s. Like I heard that cards are worth a ton now. It's like, well, not all those cards. I mean, you got to find the right players out of there, and then you got to hope they grade well, and then and then and then dot 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 dot. Uh, David B also found Discover Jaspies on a YouTube recommended video. I'll hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. I'll bet a lot of regulars, I'll bet there are a lot more regulars than I think that probably haven't subscribed to our channel. I mean, you know where we are, so I guess as long as you find us, that's great. But it does help. Yeah, Rex, Rex, goes, Rex goes way back in time. Further back than further back than Joe P, and Joe P's been around for a while too. Um, but yeah, eBay freaks. Yeah, 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of sad faces. Because I think I think because I think like the hobby kind of gets uh you know, the the hobby is highlighted by like the big super expensive cards. And so that gets people thinking. They'll they'll see some some news report. You may be sitting on uh, the news report will be like you may be sitting on a million dollar baseball card. That's what happened to one local family who was cleaning out their basement and discovered a bag full of Honus Wagner T206s. And that family flipped that into a million dollars. <laughs> Everyone thinking, oh, I got baseball cards. So if that's a million, mine must be worth thousands, right? Not all the time. Violet Pixels to three ninety nine. Noah Dobson. Matt Pink, Connor McDavid. Nice, thank you, David. David B. subscribed right away. Good on you. I know, I wish that could happen. That did happen to a family. They found like five, remember that story? Were we talking about this last night or the other night? Where some family did find like, like seven Honus Wagner T206s. There's Nico Sturm. For Minnesota, that's gonna be for Sean D. They found like a bag, a paper bag full of Honus Wagners, and they got some pretty decent grades out of them too. And this is 18 out of 50 for Minnesota. I want to say that of those seven cards, like one or two of them graded out at like a PSA four or five. You got a Mark Shifley. I don't know why that was turned around, but there's Mark Shifley. Um, most of them, I think, graded out like one or two, PSA one or two, but they got they had a few that graded out like, I mean, even a one or two is still pretty good. But yeah, what a lucky find. There's a uh, Martine Fairvery. 171 out of 399. Violet Pixels for the Caps. That's going to be for Ryan H. Rex, which is he held on to your, all of your G.I. Joe's, Transformers, Micro Machines? Right, there's no chance that those are staying in their original packaging, right? Now everyone's learned their lesson, though, I feel like. Everyone's like, oh, now you got to buy two of them. Or you got to buy one and never open it. What kid's going to do that? <laughs> yeah, original Star Wars toys? How much would those have been? But you're, not th you're not thinking that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Second inner case. I don't know when we're going to post that. This, took, this one took a little bit to fill, so maybe we'll, we'll let that case marinate a little bit. But I appreciate everybody watching and everybody joining the breaks and everyone getting into all the action. That was 8-Box Pick Your Team 3, 2019-2020. Upper Deck OPG Platinum Hockey. I'm Joe for jazbeescasegrakes.com. Thanks for hanging. I'll see you next time for the next one. Subscribe. Bye-bye.